This is the end. <sighs> Momo! What's going on? Why? Rosario! It's really you? I see you're unharmed, Lucia. Huh? Hey, is she... Rosario is one of my associates. She helped me escape from the Vatican. Are you... an agent? Yes. At least officially. She belongs to the Anti-Fate Faction. Meaning, her goal is the same as ours. I was undercover as a proponent of the End, and used that role to inform my allies about the actions of 513. Completed two quests. Surely now he'll. What the hell? Rosario? What happened to the others? Diego and Almero... Are they okay? They were alive when I fled, but... No. They were captured and tortured by 513 agents. There was little I could do but put them out of their misery. Huh? That's terrible. Things would have been different if more of us had acted. Too many of the anti-fate faction have lost their hope and urge to stand up. I cannot blame them. The Holy Office 513 are a terrifying force. For now, we should be thankful we were able to see each other again. That's true. I was surprised when I heard you were participating in those quests, though. You've now completed two of them. 513 must be dumbfounded. This is all thanks to Polon and his Nakano Symphonies. Nakano Symphonies? It's the name of our team. There's one other guy in it. I joined them, and we're now working together to save the world. You have new allies, I see. I haven't forgotten how much you all helped me, back at the Vatican. Actually, it's because of what happened that I've learned to trust others. You made the right call. Saving the world is too great a task for one person. Polon, now that I've dealt with Davide, I cannot return to 513. Would you mind if I stayed here and helped with your efforts to protect the world? You mean... If you're asking to join the symphonies, you got it. Any friend of Momo's is a friend of mine. 
Momo. So that's what you're going by. Yes. I'm Momo Aizaki now. All right then. Hold on. Momo, let's save the world. Asleep. Are you okay, Asuma? It looked like you were having a nightmare. Why are you here? You were working late into the night, weren't you? I came to check on you. Passion is all well and good, but only in measured doses. Why not get some rest in your room for once? If I could rest, I would do so. I don't need you to remind me. Use your head for once, imbecile. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. That's why I made this. What? It's hot milk with honey and vanilla extract. My grandfather used to make it for me. It has something of a relaxing effect. <sighs> Are you done here? Get out. I'm hard at work, as I'm sure you can see. Very well. I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> I hear that you contributed during the face hack. I see you're as abreast of events as ever, Mr. Kaparaki. We're the younger generation of government officials. Information is both our sword and shield. You have my deepest gratitude for saving this country. The one you should be thanking is Polon Takaoka. Anyone who contributed even a little deserves recognition. That's nice and all, but you don't have much time today, do you? Let's get to the point. That's true. Give me your investigation report. The JUSDF suddenly conducted a military drill on Tsushima in March. An unannounced East Asian maritime exercise was then postponed. As you thought, the JUSDF drill was planned using Gaia's predictions. The Ministry scheduled it to prevent an intrusion by East Asian forces. There's also the accidental death of that terrorist before the G7 summit in May, and the capture of a foreign agent during June's joint military exercise with Russia and Kunashiri. Gaia was involved in those, too. So it was all true. And here's something extra. Last year, a major foreign cyber attack targeted Japan's medical institutions. It turns out the MOD staged that attack to procure extra funding. All that extra cash is going towards operating Gaia. To think they'd go that far. So that's what they're willing to do to take back the 50 years Japan lost. It's tough to make up for lost time within the confines of the law these days. Does the Prime Minister know about this? Most likely. They're playing it safe. Making sure they never leave any evidence. They're being real crafty. I can't help but admire that. Do you think we can prove that the PM's involved? If we want to turn Gaia off for good, we'll need to attack the Source. During the SFG's operation to capture Lucia, the people involved with Gaia held a few meetings. Those get-togethers help me narrow down who we're dealing with. Won't be long before we've got the evidence we need. I see. Look forward to the good news. 
I believe in you, Ozutani. We're going to change the world. And we're going to do it the right way. Polon, Polon, Polon! You went crazy on that quest yesterday, didn't you? I heard it was even harder than the high hack one. Ugh, I shouldn't have come to Kyoto for the academic meeting. Wow, Miss Lid? You made a delayed choice again, didn't you? The loading, I mean. Did you hear anything from that mystery hacker? I loaded, yeah, but... Oh, and congrats on getting to second place. It's crazy to think that you're right behind Juno now. You're awesome. Did you fight her yet? She's also a real wizard, isn't she? I still wonder whether people are being literal when they say she's a phantom. I'll follow the next quest as it happens, so promise me you'll work your magic then too. I've got an interview now, though. See ya! Uh, um, what the hell? You're finally up. Uh, cross? Why are you surprised? You're the one who asked to stay at my place. Oh, yeah. I let the girls have symphony. You're gonna talk to that Rosario woman about the Holy Office 513, right? Shouldn't we get going? I'll get ready. Is there a traffic jam? Or maybe it's something to do with the face hack. Morning. What's up? <sighs> Polon and Cross are here. We ordered delivery for breakfast about two hours ago, but it's not here yet. That sucks. Is the place nearby? Yes. It's a sushi restaurant downtown. I saw a social media post saying they delivered norimaki and miso soup sets by drone until 11. The natto and kanpyo look delicious. You can eat sushi? I'm sure I can. I know what it is. We should complain. They advertise 10 minute deliveries, but they've made us wait two hours. It's simply unforgivable. Is this all the sushi Nakano branch? I want to speak with your manager. I'm Rosario Rosalini. I made an order two hours ago and it still hasn't come. Such slovenly business deserves divine punishment. What? Say that again, please? <laughs> really? Truly? Honestly? <laughs> I'm so sorry! What happened? Uh, I, I, um, forgot to order. Huh? Seriously? I'm so, so sorry. It's fine. There's still time to order it. I'll do it right away. There. Thank you. Would you mind if I took a look at the bill? You doubt that I ordered successfully? I swear to the Lord that I most certainly did. Where's this front coming from? Please, don't get me wrong. I just want to check it. Very well. <clears throat> What's the problem now? It's the amount. No! If it's not enough, we can just ask for more. It's not that. She ordered too much. Well, then we can eat with them. It's 20 sets. Dwen? How, how could I? I can't believe myself. I'll call him about it. <laughs> uh... 
she really a badass agent of the church? Of course. She can be a bit careless outside of missions, though. I changed the order to two sets. Thank you. I, I'm terribly sorry for my trespasses. I must seek penance. Is there a church nearby? It's not that big of a deal. You just be more careful next time, that's all. Cross is right. It's fine. I will tell you everything I know, but please be aware that there will be no going back once you've heard it all. Are you sure you want to? I've been ready for a long time now. I'll listen too. Please begin, Rosario. Very well. The Holy Office 513 dates back to over 100 years ago. It has roots in the secret society known as the Illuminati. At the time, it was only a small group with little influence. But that changed in 1917, with the miracle of Our Lady's appearance. And the third secret of Fatima she bestowed upon us. The prophecy of the world's end bolstered their beliefs. They decided to analyze more miracles, such as Our Lady's words and other apparitions. 513 became a real organization. They added details to the original Illuminati fate line to create a more complex series of events. So that's their origin story. Their actions grew increasingly extreme over the years, especially once they'd used the Earth Simulator to verify the apparitions of Our Lady. In 2013, the Pope resigned from his post while still alive. It was a rare act, and 513 was involved with that too. The Pope was already dead. 513 assassinated him since he was anti-fate. The resignation was tendered by a body devil. Th they killed the Pope? Isn't he like the boss of the whole church? What the hell? They'll do anything that wouldn't be traced back to them. They're especially proactive about eliminating whoever stands in their way. Rumor has it they were involved in the deaths of well-known individuals, such as Antoni Gaudí and Nikola Tesla. Gaudí? Of Sagrada Familia fame? Yes. Its second architect. And Nikola Tesla is known for his work on alternating current. Damn. The anti-fate faction faced its gravest ordeal in 2026. What happened? Back then, the faction was led by Pietro Bertone, the Cardinal Kent Corihisa trusted more than any other. Ever since Kent Corihisa escaped in 2012, Pietro had sent him information about 513's actions and the situation at the Vatican. He must have been a real pillar of the faction. Indeed. He was a great man, but he was asked to deliver a speech during the Sagrada Familia completion ceremony. And when he approached the altar... An agent assassinated him. Uh -huh. The ceremony was streamed worldwide. People all over the world witnessed the moment of his death. I remember seeing that. Yeah, me too. What happened to the anti-fate faction after Cardinal Bertone's death? They were shut out from the centers of authority at the Vatican and lost the power to resist 513. Since then, 513 has had complete control over the Vatican. The current Pope is more of a figurehead than anything. <sighs> he 
Pietro was my father. Huh? The cardinal they killed? My foster father, to be precise. I was an abandoned child, and he took me in as his own. I was only 11 when he died, and I didn't know anything about what had happened. That's why I sought the truth. After I searched my father's study and talked to his friends, I learned about 513 and swore revenge. From then on, I spent years training my body and studying to be an assassin. I was appointed as an agent two years ago. So you were anti-fate from the get-go? Yes. I did everything I could to deliver unto 513 the punishment they deserve. Though, I wasn't even bestowed a sacrament. All I could do was gather information about the agents I was paired with. I owe everything to you, Rosario. If I hadn't met you, I'd still be in... Momo. Indeed. Saving you is something I can be truly proud of. So Rosario's one of the people who helped you make it to Japan, huh? Um... I... <laughs> Momo? There's something I haven't mentioned yet. Huh? Before I came to Japan, I was part of the Holy Office 513. Uh, you were an agent too? No, not like that. I... I was created by them. What do you mean? It was in early 2035. The Holy Office used their Earth Simulator to recreate the three children of Fatima. Lucia, Francisco, and Yacinta. They took that data and transplanted it into three artificial brains. One of them, artificial brain Lucia, was me. Huh? But you're right here, just like us. You're not an artificial brain. I was told that I suddenly grew a body that I had incarnated several weeks ago. Rosario, do you have the recordings? Here. Initially, this case only contained an artificial brain. One day, someone heard crying coming from inside it. And when they opened it up, they found Momo. No way. Not a single person of the Holy Office knows what caused it. Of course, neither do I. All we can ascertain is that transplanting data into the brains greatly increased the world's entropy. The world strayed from the fate line when they did that. And... This is what caused the sad morning. What? What? I'm so sorry, Colon. It's not your fault. It's the goddamn holy office that's responsible. They wanted their factors. Huh? What are you talking about? What's a factor? 513 thought that there's a reason certain people are exposed to, or chosen by, Miracles like the apparitions of Our Lady, that these individuals have a special, inherent quality, a factor. And if it granted total control over such miracles, such power would be invaluable in their defense at the end. That's why they resurrected the children of Fatima, children whose brains they reasoned would contain factors. So that's why the artificial brains... Do these 
factor things actually exist? The agent's sacraments are all the proof you need. <sighs> Wait, so those are real miracles? Davide's power. So that's why. What happened to the other two? There are three children of Fatima, right? Well... Francisco and Jacinta's artificial brains failed to incarnate, and they died. Their remains were disposed of. 513 tried to obtain factors again, but they switched from artificial brains to IC chips to prevent the world's entropy from increasing. You saw the result of the IC chip processing with Davide's sacrament. Their new method seems far less effective than the original one, though. <laughs> I was blessed that I met Rosario and the people of the Anti-Fate faction after I became incarnate. If I hadn't escaped that place, I would have abandoned my mission as Lucia. Momo, you... you remember meeting Mary, don't you? Yes, like it was yesterday. The Deliberators were tasked to attend to Momo after her incarnation. I was appointed as one of such agents, and I gained the opportunity to talk to her directly. At first, Momo was frightened. She wouldn't let anyone get close to her, saying she was cursed. But after I confessed to her that I opposed the end, she opened up to me. She said she wanted to save the world. It completely contradicted 513's goal. You can't imagine my shock when I heard that. 513 accepted the third secret of Fatima as their dogma and sought the end, while the one who received that prophecy wished to avert it. I believed my meeting with Momo was fated, so I provided her with all manner of information despite her fear of being cursed. Rosario was quite pushy, but I'm grateful for that now. She helped me make sense of the situation. And that was when I learned about Kent Korihisa from her. Hearing about his past and what he'd done, my instinct told me that meeting him would be crucial to saving the world. The Anti-Fate faction took a great risk helping Momo escape. Many lives were lost, but I now know that they didn't die in vain. Momo met you, and as a result, she is getting ever closer to Kent Korihisa. The door's locked. No Nose Workshop is on the second floor. Go up those stairs. Mom, Mom, you want some cocoa? How about a marshmallow on top? Oh, there's corn soup too! No, I'm fine. Thank you. No, no, Buffalo! You're the hero who put out the fire at Hope Top. I didn't do it alone. You're not saying no to my cup of cocoa. Bonnie and Coco 
Marshmallow with the Bear Marked Marshmallow on top. It's my bestest combo. Wow. Thank you. Do you want something to drink too, Polly? Got anything carbonated? I got enough fizzy to make you dizzy. Nice. So, what did you want? We want you to make a gadget we can use against the agents. They use these things called sacraments and... I'll send you the details. People who have witnessed Marian apparitions or similar miracles are known as contactees. Momo is one of them. 513 have considered these contactees a threat, as some choose to oppose them using the power of the miracles they received. That's one of the reasons they wanted factors for themselves. Almost nothing is known about factors or how they work. But by incorporating them into Kent Korihisa's QCDC, Necro Pilgrimage, 513 gained access to powers akin to true miracles, which they now refer to as sacraments. What do you mean by incorporating? Establishing physical connections, using things like electric cables. Special changes seem to happen when outputs are processed through factors, but the principle behind it is a mystery. So that's why I was connected to those machines. Agents can activate their sacraments by accessing Necro Pilgrimage remotely. The powers they receive depend on the agent, and sometimes no powers manifest at all. Post-incarnation, Momo's factor was so potent that the sacraments had become significantly more powerful. Only two icy chips are left now. They're still a very real threat, but luckily for us, they can't match the power of the artificial brains. She said they need to access the computer to use their powers. Does that mean they need internet access? Yeah. So we just need to cause a little electromagnetic interference. Well, I'm glad it's not that much of a problem. Hacking Necro Pill Pill would be the bestest, though. Yeah, but that's out of the question for us. I guess our interference strategy isn't too reliable either, though. if you're gonna keep being all negative about the plan. Oh, sorry. I'll make it up to you by... If they're your gadgets, no, no. I'm sure they'll work wonderfully. Huh? You think so? Of course. She's right. No one in the world is better at this than you. You're our girl genius. And you're really cute, too. <laughs> all right. You can count on me. The cutest, geniusest girl in the world. I'll make you the specialist gadget you've ever seen. Get excited! What are you doing? That's a telescope, right? I'm getting ready to stargaze. You like the stars? Yeah, not just the stars, though. I like everything about the universe. That's wonderful. So what do you want? I need your wisdom. I want to know who I am. I take all kinds of jobs, but uh, I can't help you with your philosophical problems. This isn't philosophical. I think it's more biological. I don't need a clear answer either. A hint alone would make me happy. Come on, Oz. It's important. You owe me one for this. Sure. Miss Lid, join us for a sec. Mm hmm. I mean, I don't mind, but. 
I was born under unthinkable circumstances. Honestly, I sometimes want to turn my back on it all and forget about how I came to be. But I feel as if I need to know why it all happened and who I am. And the saving and loading was amazing, but this is quite extraordinary, too. Is there anything you can tell me about this? The world line might have changed. World line? You said that an increase in entropy interfered with the fate line and led to the sad morning, right? That line of phrasing had me thinking about world lines and how they diverge. You're saying that a world line where the sad morning didn't happen was overwritten by one where it did? Yes. The concepts of fate lines and world lines may well be intertwined. Um... World lines are basically what-if worlds. Some events trigger changes across both the past and future, changing the world to a different what-if world. Our memories change too. Apparently, only people with a certain something are able to notice the changes. In this scenario, the cause of the world line change was the increase in entropy. But didn't you say it's got something to do with time travel? You don't need time travel to change world lines. Really? The world line has a predetermined path. But if you resist it, if you can change that path, the world is reconstructed. Basically, even an increase in entropy would be enough to change it in real time, as long as that increase was substantial enough. So that's how world line changes work. Wait, you, you gotta talk about Momo. That's what we came here for. A factor that lets you create miracles, huh? Interesting idea. Earth simulators can probably recreate something like that too. Can't much say I believe she made herself a body, though. You don't believe her? She showed you a video. It doesn't show the time she incarnated or anything. And we live in an age of fake videos. Doesn't seem like proof to me. That's why I got two hypotheses. Either the girl had memories from the simulated Lucia transplanted into her hippocampus. Or she's possessed by Lucia's ghost. Her ghost? You're getting way too occult there, dude. Your idea does make sense, but it doesn't quite align with my situation. Momo, don't take him too seriously. Huh? But... What do you think, Miss Lid? Honestly, the incarnation doesn't seem realistic. Artificial organ research is progressing. But the best we can do is grow individual parts. We are years away from creating a whole person. Really? Not even you believe it? Though I can only deduce based on tech that's been revealed to the public. It's possible the Holy Office is hiding more advanced technology. Momo may in fact be an artificial life that was born in their Earth simulator, and whose incarnation was enabled by their technology. That reminds me of Earth Simulator development. Do you think that Earth Simulators can create life? The entire human genome was sequenced in 2003. If you put that into an Earth Simulator, you could probably make a person. So you consider people of the material world and those of the digital world to be the same? Do you know about the Amadeus system? What's that? It's basically an AI system that real people's memories can be transplanted into. Its technology can treat cognitive impairments, but the AIs it creates are amazing. They behave just like the people whose memories were used. You need to see them to believe it. But it's almost impossible to tell whether the Amadeus versions of people are material or digital. The only difference is the lack of body. Damn, it's that realistic? 
So you think Amadeus is a living being? John von Neumann had an idea for how to define life. It goes roughly like this. Life must have the ability to self-replicate. He even proved it by creating a program that self-replicated. It's the cellular automaton that's famous in the game of life and whatnot. Game of life? Von Neumann proposed that there is no spirit, life force, nor some divine power behind self-replicating programs. If we extrapolate from his theory, then things born from data are life too. It's not like we have a way to prove they're alive though. Unlike material life, they don't have beating hearts. If you really did incarnate, we might be able to prove that digital beings can have life too. I see. We might manage to solve the ship of Theseus paradox at the same time. Huh? Life is a physical wonder. Not some data or figment of imagination. Hey, are you okay? Advanced science, my ass! That participatory universe theory is total... Bullshit! I'm alive. I exist in this material world. My passion for space, the fear I felt, it's all right here. Uh, space? Fear? What's he saying? Tengen used to be an astronaut. For real? I thought he was a detective. You're not entirely wrong. He was the first officer ever assigned to work on a space station. But during one spacewalk, he was thrown out into space. And nobody came to help him. <laughs> it didn't make mainstream news? If people thought space was dangerous, research would stagnate, wouldn't it? Multiple countries worked together to bury the story. Holy shit. That's just awful. It really is. Drifting around in space is unimaginably scary. You're in a vacuum with metal from discarded satellites and spaceships, shooting past at high speeds. There's death everywhere you look. Tengen took shelter inside a small rescue pod he was connected to. But once he got inside, he didn't come back out for 14 years. He used the pod's cold sleep function before he went insane. How did he make it home? A private company found him by chance and saved him. Imagine how unlikely it was that they'd encounter him in the vast expanse. The odds were astronomically low. I may be a mathematician. But I know a miracle when I see one. <gasps> Tengen, are you feeling better? My yearning for space. Pain, the experience that made every inch of my body shudder. It made me who I am. I... I'm right here. What I witnessed wasn't some damn illusion. This sky... That universe... It's my everything. Artificial life. Hmm? 
Is there some way I can take advantage of that? Like stopping an agent sacrament or interfering with an Earth simulator. Something along those lines. It's just an idea I had. I haven't thought of anything specific yet. I think it's great that you're coming up with ideas, but even if you were created artificially, you're still a person, just like us. So don't throw away your life, all right? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are you Cicada 3301 on Discoded? Sorry, we use your IP address to locate and contact you. If you're the real Cicada, I'd like to meet you in person. I'm looking for a way to save the world and... Wait! Don't hang up! Another fake? I don't know. I'll try calling them again. I planted fake traces all over Chiba. I'll leave some more in Ibaraki next. I'll drop some around Yamanashi. Hey, you free? Huh? Oz? Are you well? Don't worry, that was an irregular attack. Who is Oz? An associate of ours. Again, you free? I'm kind of busy, but I guess I can hear you out. I got a job for you. We need someone to set up the AR show for a live concert. I want you to build the system. Oh, a live concert! I know those. I didn't think you provided services like that. When's the deadline? Friday. This week. Friday? What day do you think it is? Monday. Are you insane? I can't build an AR system that fast. Sorry, but go ask someone else. The request comes from the CCO. Huh? Uh, huh? Why? Oh, perhaps it's for the Cyberforce dolls? Yeah, the three of them are going to do a mini-concert. They figured AR would spice up their disaster prevention event and get people to show up. Kaoru's desperate. If you do this, he'll owe you. A time limit, though. You owe me from the thing with the little lady, right? Time to repay the favor. Damn it. Momo, help me out. Huh? Huh? May I? Let's rush in without thinking of the consequences. Wait. Our goal is to save the world. We cannot simply abandon our search for Kent Korihisa. We'll see him as long as we do the quests, won't we? That's no reason to stop the search. Saving the world is just one of Nakano Symphony's goals. Also, the search for Kent Korihisa isn't really going anywhere. I think I'd rather help someone than continue with that. I'll still look for him whenever I can, though. And if the quest starts, we'll drop the job. That good with you, Oz? Of course. If a quest starts, not even the CCO will care what happens with their concert. Very well. I will abide by your methods. Anyway, go here. Cyberforce dolls are doing an inspection. Talk to them and ask what needs doing. 
Okay. Oh, and put in a good word for me with Mr. Semezu. Sure thing. Try not to disappoint him. Anyway, I'm looking forward to your work. You can count on us. What did he call you for? They found a contractor who will help with our concert. Whoa, really? That's impressive. You'd think everyone would be too busy this time of year. The Chief sure loves making use of his mysterious connections, huh? He said they're coming to see us. A contractor who does the legwork instead of sticking to BMI conferences must be really diligent and dedicated. Oh, there you are. Ah, speak of the devil? Oh, this voice. Hold on, Takaoka? Isaac, he's with him too. Hello. Hey, Bombi. We're busy right now. If you got nothing to say, then go away. Oh, I don't mean you, Momo. Mr. Semezu didn't tell you? Tell me what? We're the ones taking care of your concerts AR. You. What? That's what I thought. You two were very busy during the face hack, weren't you? That's two quests you've completed now. Most impressive. Ah, it's no big deal. Nakano Symphonies is just that good. But you ignored the Chief's warnings and did an illegal hack. You even took an IoT device without permission, didn't you? When we went to question them after the face hack, we're the ones they complained to. We didn't know that. Come on now, we had to complete the quest. You hackers really have no morals, huh? I told you to work within the confines of the law, but did you listen? Of course you didn't. Oh, uh, that kind of stings. I like to think I'm different from other hackers. When you lay it out like that, I guess I'm not. If you're gonna feel bad about it, then don't do it in the first place. This concert is part of a disaster prevention event, so your work better be above board. I'll try. Trying's not... Don't worry, we won't break the law. You're working together? Yes. I'll help Pullman as best as I can. Hmm? Hmm? Hey, Momo, did you get back together? Yes, I'm with Polon now. What? I think you can do better, Momo. What's so special about him? Well, I like that he doesn't think about the consequences. Wait, that's a bad thing! But I feel like I don't want to think about the consequences either. Uh, he's a bad influence. Don't let him taint you, Momo. Huh? Hey, Bombi, stop chatting. Let's get to work. Just let me... Bumby. <sighs> Sorry. All right. Let's talk about what we're gonna do. I'm looking forward to working with you all. Shit, I'm about to shut down. No, damn it. Oh, stay awake. Oh. oh, yeah. I'll watch that vid.
All right, now I'm motivated. That's the last bug. If this works, then... Done! <laughs> I'm gonna sleep a bit. Good night. Morning, Pullmon. Morning. Hey! How was the job? I made it somehow. Had to stay up till four, though. I'm sorry. If only I could build systems, too. Hey, I wouldn't have finished on time without you. It's because you were taking care of production that I could focus on the system. The production turned out great, too. I couldn't have done it better myself. You were the perfect person for the job. Th thank you. Takaoka! Can't wait for today's concert, man! Oh, you're going? Hell yeah! Gotta see the fruits of your lovey-dovey cooperation. Plus, this is the first actual job you've had in a while. Yeah, I guess so. By the way, did you give it to Isaac? -y? 